Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that you will be tested in your wealth and in your persons, in your lives, your property and your persons, your well-being, your safety. And you will hear much harm, things that bother you, adhan, adha is anything that harms you, you leave. You'll hear much harm from the people who were given the book before you, meaning the Jews and the Christians, Ahlul Kitab, and from those who are polytheists, idolaters, or min al ladina asharaku, adhan kathira. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells how you respond to that. So if you show patience, and if you have taqwa, piety, that's the essence of this affair. That's at the root of what this affair is about. That's how you're tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that's, الَّذِي خَرَقَ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا that he created life and death, or death and life, in order to try you, the same word, you're going to have tribulation, bala, you're going to have tribulation, he did this in order to try you, to see which of you is the most beautiful in action. Ahsanu amala, the people of ihsan, the people that respond, idfa' billati hiya ahsan, respond in the most beautiful way, right? Not just the way hasanat wa la the, a good deed and a bad deed are not the equal. They're not equal. So respond to a bad deed with a good deed. That's the point. That when you push back, push back with a good thing, not with a bad thing. Push back with a good thing. And this is reiterated in the hadith when the Prophet said to Mu'ad, he gave him this uh, advice. He said, خَلَقَ النَّاسِ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ have beautiful character. And follow up any foul deed, whether it comes from you or somebody else, with a good deed. And it will obliterate it. Because the nature of goodness, it obliterates evil. Some theologian argued that evil is actually the absence of goodness. That evil is present because of the vacuum of goodness. So if there's goodness, evil doesn't have any room to exercise itself. So the Prophet ﷺ was told to be patient. And his people were told to be patient. Now, one of the things, you, you're looking, I'm sure all of you are aware of what's happening uh, around the Muslim world. You see, look at the countries where things are not out of control in the Muslim world. Malaysia is a very educated place. Turkey is a very educated place. You know, they, they're Muslims. If you go to Turkey, they love Islam. The mosques are filled. Right? If you go to uh, Malaysia, they love Islam. Their mosques are filled. Go to certain Muslim countries and you'll see that it's very different from other Muslim countries. What is the hallmark of the distinguishing characteristic that makes them different? I will guarantee you, it's not Iman. It's not Iman. It's education. They have higher levels of education. It's as simple as that. The more educated you are, the less likely you are to make a fool out of yourself. Because people who are ignorant people do ignorant things. That's why they're called juhad. The jahad is somebody who does ignorant things. It's called jahadiyya. Now, when you have a lot of ignorant people, but you have regulators for those ignorant people, these are called shiuch. Like in a tribal society, you have a wise person. That's what shaykh means, wise. That's one of the meanings. It has several meanings in Arabic. One of them is wise. So when there's a problem, the people, the ignorant people, they go to the wise person. And they say, what should we do? And then he says, we should do this or this, settle down, calm down. Now, when the sahaba, you know, 
the Arabs, by their nature, Arabs are, are uh, a desert people, by their nature. Desert people are hot people. This is well known. They have, by their nature, a choleric temperament. They're hot people. The Prophet ﷺ was dealing with them all the time. You can read Sirah from beginning to end, and you will see constantly, even amongst his companions, hot-headedness. You will see this. Hot-headedness. Allah. Ah. Really, this is part of our tradition. But what is the Prophet ﷺ always doing? Calm down. When they were shouting takbir before a battle, he said, Have some dignity. You're not calling on a deaf god. He never raised his voice in the marketplace. The ulama say, or he, he rarely did it. He didn't do it as a habit. He, the few times that he was in the marketplace, one time he really did it with some humor, with a man who was trying to sell something, and the prophet put his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the man's eyes, and he said, من يشتري هذا العبد? Who's going to buy this slave? And then he said, إذا تجدوني عند الله كاسدة Like, I don't, I'm not, because you have to shout when, when, a, when your goods aren't good, then you have to shout out. When they're good, you don't have to say, sit out. You, that means you don't think I'm something that will sell easily, so you have to advertise. That's what he was essentially saying. He said, that's not in the life he cast it. You're not uh, something uh, of little worth with Allah. That was Zahir. He, he said, Zahir and Badir, and The Prophet ﷺ, this was his nature. He was once walking in a Sahih Hadith, Aisha relate. He was walking with Aisha, and, and this is in Medina. This is after he has power. Not in Mecca, where, where they were oppressed. No, he's in Medina, and he's with his wife. And a group of Ahl al-Kitab walk by, and one of them, or all of them, say, As-salamu alaykum. Now, this is, uh, this is a, a way of just trying to goat somebody. Because salam means peace, salam means death. But, you know, salam alaykum, salamu alaykum, it's almost like you could get away with it. Aisha heard that and she said, Wa alaykum. Wa la'natullah. Wa ghadibullahu alaykum. You know, and on you, death. And the uh, damnation of God. Go to hell. And may God's wrath be upon you. The Prophet said, Mahlan ya Aisha. Slow down. Go easy, Aisha. Mahlan ya Aisha. And then Aisha, you know, she's. Here's this young woman who loves her husband, and she knows he's the messenger of Allah, and she hears somebody speaking in of him. She gets angry. What does he say? Mahna, slow down, take it easy. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alayki birrifq. Be gentle. Alayki birrifq. This is not the normal circumstances. This is in a circumstance where you're being provoked. عَلَيْكِ بِالْرِفْقِ وَإِيَّاكِ وَالْعُنْفِ وَالْفَحْشِ Beware of violence and using foul language. Anything that's uncool. أَلَمْ تُسْمَعُهُمْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Here's Aisha because she was a strong woman. Didn't you hear what they said? Maybe he didn't hear. Maybe he doesn't understand why I reacted. Maybe he thought they said, As-salamu alaykum. Alam tasma' ma qalu ya Rasulullah? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alam tasma' ma qultu ya Aisha? Didn't you hear what I said? In other words, who's establishing the sunnah here? You or me? Who's establishing the sunnah? Who are you following? Your nafs, your hawa? Because this is about constraint. This is about in tasbiru. What the taqru. If you show patience. When? When you're being provoked. When you're being angered. Laysa shadidu shadidu sura'a. The strong man is not the man who can overthrow anybody, who can wrestle anybody down. The strong man. The Prophet ﷺ said the strong man is the one who controls his anger. The one who controls his anger. 
A man came, he says, Ya Rasulullah, awsini, la tafdaf, awsini, la tafdaf, awsini. He kept saying, awsini, give me some real advice. Well, what does that mean? Don't get angry. Right? I'm an Arab. Change my personality? No, because this is about elevating yourself above your human nature to a transformed nature, the nature of belief, the nature of taqwa. This is what this deen is about. We have Muslims all over the, the, the ummah making this deen look like it's a religion of fools. Really. Out of some perceived grievances. From who? To whom? The prophet, you don't think he was cursed in his lifetime? They wrote poems about him. Those poems are still in our books of literature. Our ulama didn't shy away from writing what they wrote about the prophet. You can read Ibn Hisham, and you can read the ridicules that these poets, and they were great poets, not these idiots and fools. These were real poets. The Arab, they could write poetry. Ka'ab ibn Zuhair, who made tawbah from his poem. What did the Prophet say? Sahih al-Bukhari, Kitab al-Munaqib. This is in the Sahih. Here's what he says in Mecca to his Sahaba. They're hearing all of these things about the Prophet What does he say? In a riwayah of Ahmad and others, he says, Unduru ibad Allah. Reflect on this, O servants of Allah. And in al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, he says, Aren't you amazed? Ala ta'jabun. Kayfa yasrif Allah anni shatma Quraysh wa la'nahum? Aren't you amazed how Allah removes whatever the Quraysh have to say about me that's negative? He diverts it from me. Isn't that amazing to you? All of you? Isn't that amazing? He said, Yashtimuna muhammaman. Wa yala'anuna muhammaman. Wa'ana Muhammad. They're talking about this character named Muhammad. They're cursing this guy named Muhammad. They intended the Prophet in their poems. Everybody knew who they intended. But how did he look at it? I don't know who they're talking about. That's not me. I'm Muhammad. I'm not Muhammad. I'm not Muhammadto. Dante's Muhammadto. I'm not Muhammad, or however they think they can pronounce that name. That's not the prophet they're talking about. Don't think they're talking about the prophet. Nothing that they say can reach the prophet. The dogs will bark all night at the moon. Do the sounds of the dogs affect the glory of the moon crossing the sky? Do they affect the glory of the moon? We know who our prophet was. The problem is, we haven't told anybody else. We kept this to ourselves. Most of these people are just ignorant people. And there are some very devious, demonic people here. And I'll give you an example about this. There are people that want to see Muslims killing Jews, and there are people that want to see Muslims killing Christians. This is what they want. They want Muslims in Egypt. Where did they air this? They first showed up in Egypt on Egyptian television. Who's doing this and why? What are they trying to get out of this? The internet is filled with slanders about the Prophet It's filled with them. Don't Google it because you'll, you'll bomb it. You'll throw up. There's images. There's pictures. There's cartoons. There's comic books. Making fun. Mocking. This is the reality. But why now? And why this? Really, you think about this. Who's being manipulated here? What does Allah say to Shaytan? Wasabziz. Menisafakta, minimal. Provoke, instigate, rile up. Those among them, Bani Adam, who you're able to, be saltika, with your voice, your lies, your deceptions. He's the great deceiver. He's the liar. He loves what's happening now. This shaitan is having a field day. And he's just laughing at the... He's just, look at the... You chose me over these? Look at these pathetic creatures. You chose me over these? Look at them. Look how easy it is to manipulate them. All I have to do is spread rumors. Put 
put something on the internet and look, they're all behaving like a bunch of fools and idiots. Ah, shaitan is happy as fuck. And all these minions. وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِإِخَيْنِكَ وَرَجْنِكَ Bring your cavalry, bring your infantry. He's got minions. Really. People say, oh, you know, this is a big conspiracy. It's a, it is the Iblis. Most of these people don't know they're part of the Iblisic conspiracy. They don't know that. They just hear whispers in their heart. Hmm, I think I'll try that. That's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. But this is what's going on. This is what Allah is, is telling us. And then what does He say? وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْمَالِ Get them to do haram things so they get their money. In haram ways, in prohibited ways. Right? And zina, fornication. Get them to have illegitimate children because that will destroy them. Destroy their civilization. Destroy their families. Right? Wait home and give them your false promises. وَمَا يَعِدُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا خُرُورًا and then Allah says, and Shaitan only promises them falsehood. But then He says, right? Wa in ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. But you have no authority over my slaves. Why? Because they're people of sulf. They're people of taqwa. They're people of sakina. They're people of forbearance. This is my people. I know what you don't know. When the angel said, why are you putting somebody who's going to shed blood? Kill ambassador. Our prophet said, has never killed an ambassador. When Musaylima sent his ambassadors, he sent them back. Kill an ambassador. You know how the Mongols invaded the Muslim countries? Because they were, they were, their ambassadors were killed by an arrogant Muslim ruler. And they sent their hordes and millions of Muslims lost their lives. Their homes were destroyed. This is what happens. We're playing with fire here. This community is playing with fire. We have extremists on both sides. We've got extremists here that want to see us killing Christians, and we've got extremists over there that want to see us killing Christians and Jews. This is what they want, because they want a conflagration. You read history. Read history. The Muslims are down. We've been down before. But when we were down in Mecca, we had patience, we had forbearance, we had the teachers there to say, calm down. Mahdan ya Aisha, calm down Aisha. This is the way the Prophet conquered the world. He didn't conquer the world with swords and spears, he conquered it with good character. And now we think we can rattle toothless tigers. Really, toothless tigers like Aesop's donkey that finds the, the tiger skin. You know, in Aesop's fable, the donkey finds the tiger skin and he puts it on and he starts going around and all the animals, they run away and they're afraid. But then the fox hears him hee-hawing. He's laughing, but he's hee-hawing. And the fox comes and he says, you know, you better learn how to roar. You're not fooling me. This is what we've become. Like the donkey putting on the, the cloak of a lion. Let's roar. We've been humiliated so long. We humiliated ourselves. Who has humiliated us? Nobody can humiliate you if you have dignity. They only humiliate themselves by denigrating you. These people that are denigrating the Prophet Sallallahu they're denigrating themselves. They're showing what ignorant people they are. These aren't people of any worth or weight. They're empty people, vacuous people. But there's also amongst them demonic people. They want to see Muslims behaving like fools. You know why? Because they spent in the last few years $43 million dollars to produce hate in this country towards the Muslims. Forty-three proven million dollars. We don't know what's going on in other places. Forty-three million dollars. That, that man in Norway who went and killed 69 people, wounded 150 people, blew up a station. All these young people, even some children he killed, he was influenced by these ideas. He wrote 150, 1,500 page texts. A thousand five hundred and eighty-three pages to declare why he did it. You know why he did it? He said, we're turning into Eurasia. The Muslims are taking over, and these, the people that are doing it, are the multiculturalists. The people that want to tell us we can live with Muslims, that they're the same as us, that they share the same values with us. No, my friends, we have to have preemptive strikes now. This is, this is his uh, theology, this is his ideology. 
He was influenced by people in this country writing books. He quoted them. And Muslims, let's go destroy the American embassy. Yeah. This, this, is, this, is, this is our response. We don't build anymore. We built the greatest buildings in the world. We built the greatest universities in the world. And now you look at the Muslim community seriously. And you have to think about this. Now in the United States, my warning to all of you, we have a window of opportunity, but I'm really, I'm laying out a warning. We have a window of opportunity in this country to let people know who we are. Because there's other people defining us and they're using very sophisticated strategies, demonic strategies, to instigate, to provoke, to make Muslims react. You know what Sun Tzu says in the Art of War? He says, anger your enemies. Provoke them so that they fall into disarray. They can't even think. This is what's happened to our community. People can't even think straight. No, patience and taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة. Hold to prayer. Hold to prayer. 